welcome. Your task is to delve into the eerie world of online dating as you edit and enhance transcripts of true, creepy Tinder horror stories. These transcripts often come with low quality, lacking in paragraph structure, accurate punctuation, or clear sentence delineation. Your role is to refine them into a more structured, coherent, and clear version. It's imperative to connect the improved text with the previous segments to maintain a cohesive flow of the chilling narratives. The texts will revolve around harrowing experiences from Tinder, filled with suspense and unexpected turns. If the original transcript is overly lengthy, condense it without losing essential elements or oversimplifying. All refined texts should be in English, and each story should seamlessly connect to the preceding one. Once you complete this task, I will provide the next horrifying story for you to continue. Do you understand? If so, please prepare an introduction in English based on the given title, True Creepy Tinder Horror Stories. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. If you're joining us for the first time and enjoy horror stories, don't forget to hit subscribe. Also, let's aim for 300 likes on today's video. Now, let's dive into the story. You know that unsettling feeling when someone approaches you in a confined space and you can instantly tell something's off? That's exactly what happened to me. I was holding a cup of coffee when Steph, my roommate, called out. Her voice laced with a familiar skepticism. You think everyone's out to get you, she said, rolling her eyes. Despite her dismissive tone, I couldn't shake off the uneasy feeling about the man who had just walked past me. He had a predatory air about him that set off every alarm in my head. As I recounted the incident to Steph, she sipped from her mug, adorned with the ironic phrase, I'm a hipster, in cursive. I tried to explain the eerie feeling, but she only met my concerns with sarcasm and disbelief. The man had followed me into the elevator, and although he was supposed to get off on the third floor, he stayed. His sinister gaze followed me, causing a wave of panic to wash over me. I could hardly breathe. Before I could continue, Steph's concern momentarily pierced her usually indifferent facade. She asked if I had a panic attack. I brushed off her concern with growing irritation and pressed on with my story. The doors finally opened on the fourth floor, and I fled, his mocking words echoing in my ears. Steph tried to find humor in the situation suggesting that if she were there, she'd have made a video of the whole ordeal. But I wasn't in the mood for jokes. Our conversation was abruptly interrupted by a knock at the door. It was the pizza delivery guy. After settling the bill, we moved our workspace to the kitchen, laptops and pizza in tow, trying to return to a semblance of normalcy. Carrying my laptop to my bedroom, I placed it on the nightstand and wandered into the bathroom for a much needed shower. As the warm water cascaded down my skin, I couldn't help but let my mind drift back to the man in the elevator with his ominous stare. The stress of the encounter began to dissipate under the soothing streams of water. Refreshed, I wrapped myself in a towel and returned to my room. Sitting in front of the mirror, I methodically applied my moisturizer, allowing the routine to ground me. Eventually, I sprawled out on my bed, phone in hand, a small smile crossing my face as I read a text from Andrew, my Tinder crush. His simplicity and genuine nature in his profile picture had captivated me, and our conversations only confirmed that he was different from the rest. An hour flew by as we texted back and forth, discussing everything and nothing until he suggested a date for the following morning. 
excitement surged through me, and I eagerly accepted. My emotions were a whirlwind of anticipation and nerves as I lay in bed, trying to calm my rapid breathing. I sought my roommate's advice for the perfect outfit, wanting to look my best for this promising date. The next morning, I woke up early, filled with a blend of excitement and anxiety. After getting ready, I donned my favorite top, black skinny jeans, and new black leather boots. With a final look over from my awestruck roommate, I left for the restaurant. Upon arrival, Andrew greeted me warmly, his gentlemanly demeanor evident as he guided me to our table. The restaurant's elegance was overwhelming, with scented candles and a sophisticated, though somewhat confusing menu. He recommended a fish dish, which seemed unconventional for breakfast, but I trusted his choice. The meal unfolded beautifully, the restaurant's tranquility lending itself to our flowing conversation. Andrew's voice was smooth and rich, his eyes exuding warmth and kindness. I found myself opening up more than I had anticipated, engrossed in our exchange. As we continued to chat, I barely noticed the time passing, completely absorbed in the moment. As my date's gentle touch brought a surge of emotions, my anxiety spiraled out of control. His concern was evident, but all I could feel was the overwhelming rush of embarrassment as I blacked out, waking up in a blur, surrounded by paramedics and Andrew's worried face. I wished I could disappear. The embarrassment was a heavy blanket smothering me, especially as the medics explained my condition and released me. Andrew tried to reconnect, but the memory of blacking out on our date was too much to bear. It wasn't just a bad date. It felt like a horror story to me. The loud music of the clubhouse filled the air as I ventured into the chaos of a biker party. I was there to challenge my belief that all men were heartless, a belief reinforced by my recent breakup with Alex as I danced and drank, trying to immerse myself in the reckless abandon of the night. A sudden sickness overtook me. I found myself vomiting outside, feeling vulnerable and lost. One of the bikers offered me a handkerchief, a small act of kindness that contradicted my belief. Not all men were the same, and perhaps I was wrong to lump them all together. But in my vulnerable state, trying to find my way home, I couldn't help but feel wary and exposed. As I sat, removing my heels, I caught a glimpse of someone watching me from across the street. Their gaze was intense, and for a moment, I wondered if my night would take yet another turn. The sight of those intense brown eyes sent a jolt of fear through me, prompting an instinctual flight to the nearest haven, a house still alight in the night. After convincing the occupants of my pursuit, their search turned up empty, but one kind soul arranged a ride for me. Relief washed over me. Only once I was safely back in my apartment. Though I couldn't bring myself to discuss the night's events with my brother, choosing instead the solace of my room. In the aftermath of my escapades and heartbreak, I was overwhelmed with frustration and self-loathing. The next morning was a blur of physical discomfort and aching remorse as I nursed my hangover. After reviving my phone, it was inundated with notifications, including unexpected messages from Tinder. Despite my initial intentions for revenge against Alex, I realized I craved something genuine something to pull me from my cycle of self-destruction. I prepared for my evening date with cautious optimism, only to be met with disappointment and an uncomfortable wait at the restaurant. As I was about to leave, 
resigned to another letdown, I came face to face with Alex. My heart raced with a tumultuous mix of emotions as he tried to reach out. His expression, one of regret, but words failed him, and they weren't enough for me. Determined to escape the cycle of hurt, I broke away from his grasp. My parting words, a stern warning against his continued pursuit. The night closed on a note of defiance and a hope for a new beginning, free from the shadows of past relationships. Emma, I'm sorry, Emma, he stuttered, his words clumsy and filled with desperation. For what exactly? Treating me like your personal toy or dumping me for your neighbor without a second thought, I yelled, the hurt piercing through each word. His apologies fell on deaf ears as I pushed him away and drove off, my mind a whirlwind of anger and pain. The tears wouldn't stop as I drove home, each one a testament to the heartache I felt. Upon arriving home, my brother's presence on the porch was a small comfort in the storm of my emotions. As he chased off Alex, who was lurking nearby, a protective rage was evident in his actions. Inside, I sought refuge in the safety of my apartment. My brother's understanding embrace a reminder of the family bond that no heartbreak could sever. In the aftermath, I purged my life of Tinder and all other dating apps. The realization that my reckless search for love could have endangered not just me, but my loved ones too, was a sobering thought. The idea of Alex returning was unimaginable, especially with my brother's unspoken vow of protection. As I navigated the treacherous waters of heartbreak and healing, a new voice entered the narrative. Daniel, or Danny as most called him, shared his own tales of romantic woes and tender misadventures. His pessimistic view of his chances with women and his less than stellar Tinder experiences painted a picture of someone all too familiar with rejection. Despite the occasional match, the genuine connection he sought remained elusive. Whether it was trying to engage with women in public places or resorting back to Tinder, Danny's attempts were met with a spectrum of negative reactions. From disinterest to outright hostility, his story was a stark reminder of the challenges and complexities of modern dating, where hopes and heartbreaks often go hand in hand, each swipe a leap into the unknown. With renewed determination, I began using Tinder daily, even splurging on Tinder Plus to expand my opportunities. I set my search criteria wide open, hoping to increase my chances. Despite attracting a few older matches that didn't pique my interest, I continued my quest, each interaction a lesson in what not to do or say. Amidst the sea of unsuitable matches, I stumbled upon Danielle. Older and more mature, she exuded a confidence and allure that captivated me. Our initial exchanges were mundane, but as we conversed over the weeks, I found myself genuinely drawn to her wisdom and demeanor. She was the alpha female to my inexperienced self, offering guidance and a perspective that I desperately needed. As our relationship progressed off Tinder to more personal communication, I learned of her unhappy marriage. Her husband, a distant and disinterested investment banker, left her longing for companionship and understanding. Despite my initial reservations about the imbalance in our dynamic, Danielle revealed how much she valued our conversations. To her, I was not just a distraction, but a source of fresh energy and hope in her stagnant life. This connection, albeit unconventional, became a source of growth and comfort for both of us. I embraced the role of the eager learner, 
absorbing her wisdom and advice while she cherished the vibrancy and attentiveness I brought into her world. It was a symbiotic relationship, each of us filling a void in the other's life. Despite the odds and the judgment that might come with such an age gap, we continued to find solace and understanding in each other's company. Our first meeting in the park initially seemed innocent, but the reality of her marital status loomed over us. Despite the danger and moral implications, I couldn't deny the chemistry between us. The date was lighthearted. But as we said our goodbyes, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was both incredibly right and terribly wrong due to our age difference and her marriage. Our next date escalated in terms of risk, a secluded cabin in the woods left to Danielle by her late father. As we approached the cabin, its dilapidated state and the surrounding pine trees gave it an eerie, almost horror movie-like appearance. The damp and moldy interior didn't help ease my anxiety, which had been heightened by a past family experience. Despite the initial discomfort, we settled in. But as the day wore on, an awkward silence fell between us. Suddenly, Danielle excused herself without a word, her absence growing longer and more worrying by the minute. When she finally reappeared, the sight of her in lingerie took me completely by surprise. Her confidence and allure were undeniable, and I was utterly transfixed. However, it wasn't just her appearance that caught me off guard. She was holding a remote control, which, upon pressing a button, turned on the TV and filled the room with classical music. The unexpectedness of the situation left me blushing and flustered. I had never been in such a scenario, and the mix of attraction, confusion, and the music created an intense and unforgettable moment. It was clear that Danielle was full of surprises, her actions always a step ahead of what I could anticipate. The ambience shifted dramatically when Danielle leaned in closer. Her intentions clear, but then quickly turned into something far more ominous. The reveal of a bread knife in her hand was unexpected and deeply unsettling. The sensation of the cold blade tracing over my skin sent a wave of panic through me, transforming what could have been an exciting moment into one filled with fear and confusion. As I tried to reconcile the rush of adrenaline and emerging panic, Danielle's actions became more intimidating. My initial arousal turned to sheer terror as the blade hovered dangerously close to my skin. In a desperate attempt to regain control, I moved away, breaking the spell of the moment. The rest of the evening was marked by a heavy silence and tension. I retreated to bed, unable to sleep, my mind racing with thoughts of escape. The experience was a stark reminder of the unpredictable nature of relationships and the importance of understanding and respecting boundaries. The mix of arousal, fear, and subsequent panic left an indelible mark on my psyche, altering my perception of intimacy and trust. The night ended not with a sense of fulfillment, but with a profound realization of the fine line between pleasure and danger. Having a knife drawn across my skin by someone I had only recently met was far beyond the boundaries of what I was willing to explore. The fear and panic that filled me overshadowed any initial excitement. The next morning, the tension between Danielle and me was palpable. She understood the fear in my eyes and made the decision to cut our trip short. The drive home was a quiet reflection of the boundaries crossed and the risks taken. When I shared my experience with friends, their reactions were mixed, some labeling me an idiot for not embracing what they saw as a prime opportunity. However, 
The experience taught me the importance of recognizing my own limits and the need to communicate and respect boundaries within any relationship. I appreciate all of you for listening to tonight's story. If you found it intriguing and you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the red button below. Don't forget to like this video to show your support. And if you're feeling especially supportive, share it with your group chats, forums, and loved ones. Thank you. And I look forward to sharing another story with you in tomorrow night's video.